Suppose, now you know you're all intelligent, just suppose that Obama's mama had aborted him. Then you would not have seen the first black man as the president possibility of the United States because God deals with purpose. God deals with it in his own time. You can't hurry him. That, 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 see, that's what you understand. You, you got to understand that you might be in a situation, but just stay with God. Because God in his own time will deliver you. Just stay with him. Are you listening to me? Amen. As we review our history, we see that God, that God in his own time brought Martin Luther King. In his own time. Now also watch it. Somebody told Dr. King's daddy about a man named Jesus. And he was, he was a preacher. His daddy was a preacher. And then God called him to be a preacher. Now, now, now don't get mad at preachers. Think about that it was a preacher. I always walk around and I always tell folk it was a preacher that led the civil rights movement. Have you ever thought about that? It was a preacher. It was a Baptist preacher. I'm going to tell you all on this side. A Baptist preacher. Baptist preacher led uh, to the civil rights movement. Led that movement. Well, how did he do that? Because God because God raised him up uh, at the right time. It, it, and, and when God gets ready, God can move. He can move in a mysterious way. He brings people out of nowhere. And brought him, trained him, and, and, and brought him to that place where, where he liberated. He, he did away with the, with the uh, uh, not completely, but enough yeah. so that you have the freedom that you have now. Yeah. Now, you're not, you're, not completely, you're not completely free. You understand? You will never be, I, I need to preach to you. You will never be completely free until Jesus sets you free. And when he sets you free, it's you are free indeed. All right. So, so he led that way. Now watch, now watch what God did through him. God in put a, a philosophy in him. The philosophy of nonviolence. The philosophy of nonviolence. Okay? So you got all you hotheads that's in here this morning and ready to fight at a drop of the pen and, and want to tell folk all, you got to learn how to be patient. Because Dr. King led the movement that was nonviolent. Now you now you got you got to understand that somewhere uh, I, 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 I'll just use my imagination that his daddy showed him a scripture uh -huh. that uh, the scripture says over there in the fifth chapter of uh, Matthew yeah. uh, he, he, he say, it says blessed are the peacemakers for they shall inherit the earth. Yeah. If you want to get over, yeah. be a peacemaker. If you, if you want to see things move, yeah. if, if you want to inherit what God has for you, yeah. then be a peacemaker. Yeah. You understand? So be nonviolent. Non don't, don't, because God will show you uh -huh. that if you be violent, you have no win. You don't understand. You don't have any guns. You don't have any, 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 any way to protect yourself against an organized force. If you, if you become violent, then this gives the people a, a reason to destroy you. 
And if you can understand that, if you can understand that, you have to understand that nonviolence takes away the aggressiveness. Because you're going you're gonna to touch the hearts of other people. You saw it when they put dogs on you. You, you saw it when they put hoses on you. You, you saw what happened in the midst of all of that. But yet they didn't fight back. Because the philosophy, the philosophy is if, if you don't fight back, God. See, y'all, y'all ain't listening to me. If you don't fight back, if you just hold your peace, if you just hold your head, don't, don't be a great fighter. Understand that if you hold your peace, God will fight your battle. He already has a time to set you free. He already has a time to make you the head and not the tail. But you have to wait on him. You have to wait on him. And so what happened, the country's mood changed. You, have, you begin to have more people to see maybe, maybe they are being mistreated. Yeah. It's on the television. Amen. It, it's, on, it's all over the world. Those people are being mistreated. Yeah. And so what happened, there was this movement that came into being. Uh-huh. And, and you have the civil uh, law passed. Uh-huh. Civil rights law passed. And so you can think, you see most, most children don't think, because in this day and time, they, uh, uh, especially within the, the middle class and, and the upper middle class, uh, the children, black children uh, with spoons, they, born with spoons in their mouths. Uh, they got their own television. Uh, they had their own radio. Uh, they have their own uh, uh, phone. Uh, they, have, they can talk all over the world. They can see whatever they want to see at any time. So they don't understand that somebody had to sacrifice for that. When you, when you, when you turn it on that water and don't want to turn it off, when you're keeping the lights on all night, somebody has to pay for it. You see? But, the, but if you don't understand what's going on, just keep living. And then one day you'll be in the same shoes that your daddy is in, that your mother is in. And then you will start telling yourself and you'll feel sorry of how you treated your own mother who was taking care of you. How you talked and how you slammed the door and how you twisted around like, like you ruling something. You're not ruling anything because if they stop paying those bills. Amen. So you got to you got to be thankful. You got to be to glorify God because of the jobs that you have, and 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 so, and those jobs, those jobs. Let me let me drop this into all these executives around here. Those jobs were not created for you. Those teacher jobs, those teacher jobs were not created for you. But God, but God, let things begin to change. And here you are walking around, amen, the being blessed by the God of the Bible. And I always have to say, of the Bible, amen. Not, not, not the God of false God, but the God of the Bible. Because those old people, those old people talk about the God of the Bible. The the preachers couldn't read or write, but they they talk about the God of the Bible. Amen. They they had a story that that they would tell. Uh They would always tell stories. The sermon sermon was about stories. 
Yeah, but they, they didn't know anything about no exegeting scriptures. Amen. They didn't know anything about no Greek and Latin. They didn't know anything about Roman language. But one thing they knew about Jesus. And that's all they taught. That's all they taught was Jesus. Amen. Now, black folk, you got to understand that what you need is Jesus. They did not jump in the Mississippi River. They were thrown in the Mississippi River, but they didn't jump in the Mississippi River. They still used to say, if I can just make it to the house, if I can just make it to the church house, I might be down today. I might be bruised today, but if I can make it to the church house, if I can hear the name, that's sweeter than any name. If I can hear the name that soothes my doubt. If I can hear the name that calms my fear. If I can hear the name, what name are you talking about? Not another name given among men whereby men must be saved, but by the name of Jesus. That is the only name that will really mean anything. It'll mean something in your life. The name Jesus. Well, how did those old folk make it? I see my grandmother who worked for R.E. Bob Smith uh, out there working for him and, and doing things for in that house. She was a maid. But, uh, she, she couldn't dress. Uh, she, couldn't, she couldn't look dignified. She had to dress in the maid's clothes. Yeah. They had special clothes for the maid. Yeah. But on Sunday morning, yeah. she, she'd work all, all Saturday. Yeah. She would iron her, her clothes, yeah. a white dress. Yeah. She would iron that dress. Yeah. And, and she, would, she would put that dress on. And, and she would call a cab. Now don't ask me how this woman called a cab, but she called a cab to take her to hear Reverend Dudley over at Bethel in Fourth Ward. Yeah. When she get there, she had a song. She had a song. Uh -huh. I never shall forget yeah. the song that she had. Yeah. She sang it in the kitchen. Yeah. She sang it mopping. Like a ship. Yes. Tossed and driven. Yes. Battered yes. by an angry sea. Yes. When the storm yes. of life are raging. Yes. And the billows yes. follow me. Yes. I look up. Yes. I look up. Yes. I look up. Yes. And wonder why good fortune passes me by. But then I say to my soul, don't you worry, the Lord. Don't worry. Don't worry. The Lord will make a way somehow. Will you trust him? That's my... That, Will you trust him? I didn't get to my checks, but the Lord will make a way somehow. And then she'd go down and say, I try to do. Do y'all know that? My best in service. Try to do the best I can. But when I try to do the right thing, evil! Presses me on every hand. I look up and wonder why good fortune. Have you ever been there? Good fortune passes me by. But then I say to my soul, take courage. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord. 